Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Seattle Kingdom in Seattle, Washington, as we prepare to kick things off at this edition of the U.S. Hot Rod Association's Camel Mud Racing and Monster Truck National Championship Series. Kelly, it looks like we're ready for Monster Truck Qualifying. That's right. We start off the qualifying action with Gary Starton in this gold bandit, and right along with him is Randy Lynn in the hot tempered Jeep. And this is Randy's first time out, and of course, we'd like to mention that it is a lady, so the, a lot of the lady fans are really it be interesting to see how the new racer does in the brand new Jeep Monster Machine. And of course, uh, Gary Sargent with the Skull Bandit, always one of the toughest on the National Event Tour. Now we're qualifying for eight available positions here in this one-shot qualifying round. This is the only chance they'll get to place themselves in the field. You have to wonder what Randy Lynn is thinking about in front of her hometown fans, the Aberdeen, Washington lady looking up uh, against one of the toughest there in the other lane. The green flag drops and look at Sargent drive away. Tremendous air, a little bit of a rough landing as Randy Lynn finally makes it over the cars. Uh, Kelly, I'd say Randy is a little bit conservative. Yeah, it's definitely going to get the same wind from the hometown fans, especially in front of the hometown fans. That would be a little bit rough. Well, she was more concerned with doing things properly during this qualifying <laughs> round than uh, going out and getting a little too radical. Uh, Gary Sargent, the Skull Bandit, receives an elapsed time of 4.20 seconds of the uh, big black Chevrolet from the Los Angeles, California area. Indeed, is one of the favorites coming into this event. Now, Gary Sarton is no newcomer to this particular sport. He's won several U.S. Hobbit Association national event titles, and on this particular hit, as the first man out in qualifying, Gary puts it way up in the air. That's not necessarily something you want to do, Kelly, during this type of competition. Look at that landing. Well, flying through the air like that uh, is definitely not good for times, but it does make some exciting action for the fans. Exactly. It's a very, very spectacular maneuver, but of course, the closer you can keep the machine to the ground, the quicker your elapsed time is going to be. Sarden will be probably happy with that 4.20 second elapsed time, while the lady from Aberdeen, Washington, receives a 7.70 second clock. Well, here's a guy who will definitely be trying to put on a show in front of the hometown fans, Kelly. Jeff Bainter out of Yakima, Washington. We've seen him a bunch of times on ESPN's coverage of U.S. Hobbit Association Camel events, and he is definitely notorious for his craziness. Yeah, Jeff is in the high voltage Jeep, and uh, this ought to be really exciting. He uh, gets a little crazy. He debuted this car at a particular event of the U.S. Hobbit Association Tour in 1989 in Oklahoma City. As a matter of fact, in that debut at one. Look at this thing leave the starting line, actually carrying the wheels. Tremendous air for Boehner, and what a landing as the crowd loves every minute of that one. An excellent, excellent pass. In fact, a lot quicker than I think Kelly people thought he was going to go. You can see the machine actually picked the front wheels up on the starting line launch when he hit the first set of cars. Tremendous amount of air. And as always, that short wheelbase Jeep comes down a little sideways, and those tires just send it back up over and over on every attempt at landing. What a ride. The elapsed time, 3.76 seconds. That's going to be incredibly tough to beat. Next up in line is Taurus. He's driven by Kirk Frankish, and he's from Canada. And uh, he's been around for a long time. It's a good exciting run. Drew has just purchased this truck from the Wilman family in Illinois. This is one of the original heavyweight Taurus. It's 15,000 pounds plus for this Chevrolet. And you can see that Frankish decides to keep it a little bit slower, a little bit more conservative to keep that nose on the ground. When he hits the first set of cars, you won't see that much air underneath these tires, and that's the objective here to try and improve on the last time. And considering the Frankish knows that he's probably going to be able to qualify if he just plays the cards right, he doesn't have to push this machine yet. And when he does in eliminations, it's going to be a wilder ride because of the weight. The elapsed time, 5.61 seconds, should put the Calgary Alberta racer into the field. Coming up next, we've got Hot Stuff. This is given by Todd Blazer, and Todd is from Milwaukee. That particular Jeep is Jeff Boehner's old Hot Stuff Jeep. This is the machine that you saw him so many times on ESPN's coverage last year of U.S. Harvard Association events. Blazer is brand new. Used to be a crew chief for several monster truck uh, teams out of California. He makes his solo effort. A lot of air there, but a beautiful job landing that thing. I'll tell you what, that was definitely a crossed-up situation at the end of the cars, and this rookie, his first year of competition, may have just put down the statement about his driving skills. Tell you what, uh, very seldom do you see a brand new driver come out and handle a situation like that. In fact, very seldom do you see a brand new driver come out and take chances like that. You'll see on this slow motion replay of the first hit that he was definitely not light footing it. Tremendous amount of air, and there's that Jeep tendency with the torque of the engine to drop the left front side of the car first. And indeed, when it comes down on one corner, you're in for a ride. He manages to control it perfectly. He should be real happy with this. He got 4.99 on his last time, so uh, he should definitely be pleased. I wouldn't be surprised if that held up to one of the top four spots. Coming up next online is Warren Davis in Barefoot. Again, Warren Davis is driving a relatively new machine for him, the big Barefoot Chevrolet. Everyone's out there as well. And he again 
takes a very, very conservative approach, but that's pretty much what you want to do in this situation. It's one thing to go out and put on a show for the fans, but it's another to qualify for one of these Camel Mud Monster Series events. And indeed, if you want to get into the program, you're going to take it easy. And you can see the starting line launch was definitely nowhere near under full power. In fact, it almost sounded like there might have been a fuel delivery problem. But Davis, so far, as the straightest line down this 150-foot course. You can see a little bit of engine misfiring there in the exhaust headers coming up through the hood. There was some fuel delivery problems on that run. And he should be happy with this time, Mike. 4.85 for Warren Davis and Barefoot. I'll tell you what, if that truck can run that fast even with engine problems, he's going to be somebody to contend with during actual eliminations. Considering that truck is so heavy, Warren Davis, the new Montana pilot of the Barefoot Chevy, should be tough. Here's a guy that's been around for a long time. Up next online is Monster Mac. This is Mike Welch from Washington also. This is going to be interesting. Heavy. It is heavy. As a matter of fact, he's done everything he can to lighten it up. But you can see, even on that starting line launch, the Chevrolet power plant is really not a story. It's still lacking just a little bit compared to some of the new supercharged fuel injected motors. As you can see, he takes this machine over the course basically in the kind of fashion that he was looking for. I think that Mike Welch's biggest concern at this event is going to be consistency. I think he'll probably take the course as evenly and as conservatively as he can even during competition. But he's going to be trying to save the equipment. You watch when he hits the cars. He gets the front end up enough to land about the third car down, and then he reapplies the throttle, takes it through very evenly. Monster Mash that though, was disappointing last time. It was 6.62. But uh, what do you expect for something quite that heavy? That's true. We're talking about uh, an honest 18,000-pound vehicle. And if it gets him in the program, it's going to be good enough to call for. <laughs> That's all it takes. Coming up next is everybody's favorite. This is Bigfoot, driven by Gene Patterson. This is always one that uh, the crowd loves to watch. I'll tell you what, Bob Chandler's Bigfoot team from St. Louis, Missouri is definitely intent on winning that $100,000 pot at the end of the rainbow for the 1990 Camel Mud Monster Series. This is Bigfoot number seven, but it's received a few innovations recently. Exceptionally powerful new motor, and Dee Patterson is certainly one of the best drivers in Bob Chandler's stable. Watch for Patterson to make a picture-perfect run here, trying to keep this truck low to the ground. Leaves the starting line. Nice, nice leap. A little bit rougher landing than I think uh, Patterson probably would have liked. And that actually may have slowed the elapsed time a little bit. In fact, it may not be enough to threaten Jeff Maynard's 3.76 second leader. Not bad run, though. He didn't see much air. I'll tell you, the, the initial hit was just about perfect. It was the landing, uh, the actual landing of the truck near the very last car that sent the machine to a bounce that it kept Patterson from reapplying the power that he needed to pick up the elapsed time. Watching the slow motion replay, the hit perfect. The truck still basically level. He comes down nicely, but the landing, actually hitting the uh, butt of the landing ramp was the problem. Puts the machine up in the air several times, and he goes across the finish line a little bit slower than he certainly would have. And he probably isn't going to be quite as happy as he could have been in this one. It's uh, lap time, 5.49. Well, believe it or not, it looks like Jeff Boehner and the high voltage G from Yakima may end up number one qualifier in this field. That would definitely be exciting for the fans here in Washington. Stay with us. We've got more exciting action coming up for you. The Super Modified Mud Racers are up next.